putting somebody to sleep. It's and hearing the crowd go eight, just absolutely crazy when they see when they see a knockout. It's just it, it's just almost like a high. I mean, it's just a great feeling. And, uh, maybe I'm wired wrong, but it's a it's a heck of a feeling it's knocking somebody out. I'm Matt Helm, uh, out of St. Charles MMA, fighting April second. My name's Jake Constant. I fight for John Gaston at Premier Martial Arts. Um, I got into fighting when I finished my sophomore year of wrestling at the University of McKendree. When I'm in there, the only thing I'm focusing on is, you know, finishing the guy in front of me. It's a rush, you know, you can't get it from anything else. My name's Jake Constant. I train for John Gason at Premier Martial Arts in Springfield, Illinois. Having my, uh, having my hand raised at the end of the fight, uh, coming out victorious, I guess uh, ecstasy is the only way to describe it. Um, it's, you put in all the work, the hard part's training, the easy part's actual fight and then when you actually reach your goal then there's no there's no feeling like it. I'm Aaron Eli, I'm 11 and 0. I'm fighting April 2nd for Shamrock MMA at the Stratford Inn. I love getting submissions, I have loved knocking somebody out, I love pounding on people, whatever happens, happens. I'm an action-packed fighter, every time I fought, people have always been going wild. I'm gonna be a dangerous guy this fight, so just watch out. My name's Matt Williams, I fight out of John Gason's Premier Martial Arts. Um, there's only three things in my life I do you know, that I love, and that's hunting, wrestling, and fighting. There's nothing like it. All them crazy people jumping off buildings with parachutes and whatnot and driving fast cars, it's, you know, this is my fast car. And that cage door shuts and you're like, yeah, it's on. Devin Guerrero, 1-0, and fighting April 2nd at the Stratford Inn. When the ref says, fighter, are you ready? Fighter, are you ready? It's just, I go into another zone. I've been in the gym every day working my ass off, so come watch me whoop some ass. Well, I got into fighting uh, pretty much because I was a fat kid, and it turns out that I'm pretty good at it. I don't go out there just to not lose, I go out there to win. I guarantee my fight alone is worth the price of admission. Everybody that comes to watch me fight knows that I go out there to put on a show. I know within about four seconds, I can put him on his ass and he'll be sleeping. He may want to bring a pillow and a blanket because he's going to sleep. I was undefeated, I was 6-0, and uh, I lost my first match because Zach Freeman backed out. I had to go up a weight class, and I lost my second match because he backed out, and I had to go up another weight class. I blame both of my losses on him, and I think somebody deserves to pay, and he needs to pay for it. I accept responsibility for my own actions, and uh, I've never really heard of someone blaming a loss on another fighter that dropped out. All I got is he backed out. I didn't get any information. Um, then I ended up having to go up a weight class and fight, and that was my first loss. And then the second time, supposedly he broke his hand, but I've heard otherwise. And uh, then I had to go up and fight a catch weight fight, and it's my second loss. So I blame both those losses on him, and I'm looking to revenge that. For one, I did injure my hand. Um, then I was also sent out of town for work for three weeks to Denver, Colorado. He didn't have to take that fight against Joel Blair, who wasn't a weight class above me. He was three pounds above the weight class. Uh, so, you know, sorry to Jason if uh, I dropped out of the fight, but I'm coming April 2nd, buddy. To be honest, I hate him. I can't stand him, and this is the only person I want to fight right now. I really don't know much about the guy. Not enough to say I hate him, but... Uh, I know that he's really running his mouth and he's going to have to back it up. I wanted this fight more than I wanted any other fight. I want it bad. I don't care if he's ready and I don't believe he should be 4-0. Obviously he's scared to fight somebody decent. My combined opponent's record is 18-3. and three. After this fight, my opponent's combined record is going to be 25-5. and five. I'd say that's pretty respectable, you know. He even sent me a message on Facebook saying, hey Zachary. Please show up this time. I would appreciate it. So I mean, yeah, submissions are out the window, decisions are out the window. I wanna I wanna finish with a KO or a TKO. I'm coming for him. He's already messed up my MMA record. Now I'm gonna mess up his. I'm Jason McDaniel, I'm fighting Zach Freeman, April 2nd, strap for in. I'm looking to kick his ass. He hasn't been to the world championships of boxing. He hasn't won the Chicago Golden Gloves, the St. Louis Golden Gloves. My stand-up's great. My last guy, brocked him, blood all over the place. Almost broke his nose, swelled up eye. My stand-up's great. I ain't gonna let nobody, you know, hit me. 
he can think all he wants, you know what I mean? Um, I feel like that I got, you know, some of the better stand up around here. I might come from a wrestling background, but I have three or four KOs. You know, I feel pretty solid standing up, so, you know, I, I'm not really concerned. I, I think he's going to try to take me down right off the bat. Um, I, yeah, once I hit him with my jab or my two or anything, or, I mean, he's going to want it on the ground, just like the last opponents. Jake Constant doesn't want to stand with me. We'll see when it comes April 2nd, you know. That's what I love the most is when somebody's coming at me hardcore, going, you know, balls to the walls, trying to knock me out. That's usually when they open their self up and I usually knock them out. No, i never see anybody even hit me. Um, I just wish that, um, you know, he stands and bangs with me. Last guy, he didn't want no part of my stand up. Um, you know, I can't wait to line him up. He has a mighty mouth, you know, let's see if his uh, hands can back it up. Jake Constant, you better train hard because I'm going to knock you out in the first round. He's pretty green. He's only had one fight, so try to make him fight my fight. Stand and bang with me. I'm going to defend his, his takedowns and just try to work him. I've got a lot of experience, and it's there's high-level collegiate wrestlers that have trouble defending my takedowns, so, I mean, that's going to be a, a challenge. He's used his wrestling abilities. I've always used my hands. I mean, we're going to have to switch it up because I don't look for this to hit the ground. I mean, if he wants to strike with me, I welcome it. Game plans to make him stand and bang, show his fighting abilities, just like I'm going to show mine. I'm working hard and long at this to fight the best. Uh, as far as defending the takedown and, you know, standing and striking, that would be my game plan if I fought me too. You know, it would be to defend my takedown and do that, but that's a little easier and said than done with the background that I have and the over 15 years of wrestling experience that I have at the high level that I competed at. My way of fighting, standing and banging. Let's throw these hands, let's take the streets to the cage. I see myself winning by a, hopefully a submission move. I think I could submit Brian Cho. No, he won't submit me. There's no, definitely that will not happen. Fighting Brian Shell, uh, the game plan wouldn't be to take me down. My ground skills are gonna be better than his. I think if I beat when I beat Brian Shell, that they'll look at me a little. They'll have a little more respect for me. I look forward to you taking me to the ground and uh, experiencing some of your jujitsu. He just better be on top of his A game because I'm bringing mine. I'm ready for Kenny. He just needs to be ready for me. I'm Kenny Hopin. I'm fighting Brian Shell April second. All my family and friends need to come out and support me when I walk out the ring a winner. He's been trying to fight me for the last year, you know, and the way I look at it, student versus teacher, you know. He's a big man in my world, you know. But if he wants it, he's got it. I currently own CMMA Fighting Systems in Granite City, and I train a team of amateur and pro fighters. A lot of people feel that this is uh, sort of a bad blood type of fight or, or something like that. This is one of those cases where I gave the kid my best shot, and uh, we had some success with Shannon. And now he's training with uh, Mike over there at St. Charles MMA. I don't know, I just kind of lost focus. It just seemed like the gym wasn't where I wanted to head. But uh, Steve didn't really, he didn't really see it my way. And, you know, I, I'm guess he, I guess he's a little upset about it, you know, so he's kind of wants a little payback. And like I said, this is, you know, he's been wanting it, you know, I'm, I'm gonna give it to him. From my history with Shannon and, and having trained with him in the past and trained him in the past, I have a good idea of, of his physical attributes for this fight. I'm a little taller, I have a little bit of a reach, uh, I'm probably physically stronger. I probably have learned more about him than he's learned about me because in our time together my focus was on his development, not on mine. So I do think there are things that I can pull out of the bag that he's never seen and I'm not sure what he still has that I haven't seen. I'm 100% different from a year ago. I couldn't actually, from where I am now, I can't believe I've even fought 10 times before. If I was to beat Steve Canole in the cage on April 2nd, it would be awesome to have my hand raised just for one Granite City bragging rights right there. You know what, I'm not really into the trash talking thing because ultimately once they shut the cage, all the trash talking's over. That is the best female fighter on the scene right there. I'm really excited about Glenna and Brittany Annick. I mean, you got a striker versus grappler. And Glenna comes from Chael Sonnen up in, in Oregon. And I know if Chael says those type of words that she could be one of the best in the world, I also feel that Brittany Anna could be one of the best in the world. So you know what, if they're this, they're this young in their amateur career, let's see what happens. And let's go out and you know, match the two best that we can get. And, hey, winner, winner take all. And they're both two, two respectful, classy girls. And we're really looking forward to the matchup. Glenna Avila versus Brittany Anik. 
Uh, two young women vying for the top spot on the food chain in women's MMA. Uh, Glenna Avila, highly regarded uh, youngster. Uh, Chael Sonnen had some some very had very high praise for her, uh, calling her the next big thing. Uh, well-rounded. Uh, she comes from that camp, that tremendous wrestlers over there. Uh, Jiu-jitsu is going to be good. Her striking is going to be good. I understand her cardio is uh, always top-notch. Uh, she's uh, she's going to have her hands full. Brittany Anik, uh, this young lady, is, is uh, she's also uh, number four in the country. Uh, her hands are on blast. Over the years in kickboxing, I've gotten four U.S. titles, a Missouri title, and then a world IKF title. Right now, I'm ranked number four in the world for uh, amateurs in my weight class, and I plan on moving up pretty quickly. I'm not the type to sit here and talk trash about my opponent. I think that uh, all the talking will be done in the cage on April 2nd. With Glenna, by watching a little bit of tape that I have seen on her, you know, she is, she is a super tough, aggressive, in-your-face type fighter that makes for a great main event. And you know what, if I was, if I was betting on the show, um, I'd flip a quarter. But I also, at the same time, as being Brittany's coach, I also want to put Brittany in the toughest fight she can so when the pros come, she's ready for them. I would put Brittany's stand up against any girl in the world. And I don't mean the country, and I don't mean uh, one tournament or another tournament or another one organization against another organization. I say the world. Brittany and I, uh, when you look at the rankings, they, they ranked her below me. Uh, I don't really agree with that because our records are identical. We're both five and now. I think it's a, it's anybody's game, and that's what makes it exciting, and that's why I need to train so hard. I think this is going to be probably one of the toughest fights that I've ever had to face, and hopefully I'll be one of the toughest fights that she'll ever have to face. April 2nd, uh, Bad Blood. Uh, Shamrock MMA has put together a masterpiece. Uh, uh, eight fights on this card. Eight of these could be main event fights. Uh, you've got the number three ranked girl in America versus number four. Uh, we've got Knogel versus Walsh. We've got the Altar Boy. We've got Finney's MMA. We've got Hit Squad. This is going to be a who's who of the Midwest fight scene. Uh, it doesn't get any better than this. April 2nd, Shamrock MMA, Bad Blood.